Quebec-based Medicago releasing their phase three results this morning. And joining me now is Nathalie Chaland, who is Senior Director of Scientific and Medical Affairs at Medicago. Nathalie, good morning to you. Good morning, Mrs. Ng. Oh, Mrs. Ng, so formal. You can call me Mel. All good. Uh, <laughs> Natalie, let's, let's get through some of the results. Phase three, again, just released these numbers. This is fresh this morning from trials. Um, let's bring up that board if we can. Overall efficacy against COVID-19 variants important, 71%. And then that number jumps when you're looking at Delta and Gamma. Can you talk about um, the rollout here with trials? Because this vaccine, Medicago, is one of the only ones that really tested against variants. You're exactly right, Mel. This, this is, uh, you know, great news for Medicago this morning. You know, you have to take into account that uh, our clinical uh, efficacy trial was uh, performed in, two, uh, in, in an environment that was 100% variance. So it's not like the first uh, vaccine rollout when they had only the ancestral strain circulating. So we had no ancestral strain at all in our in our trial so we are extremely pleased with the results that we are presenting to you this morning let's break down some more numbers natalie uh, over 24,000 adults 18 and older uh, in six different countries um would you say this is a good sample to be able to take to health canada and say look at what we've done and this is you know efficacy rates are looking great this is what, you know, when we design a clinical trial like this one, we are constantly in discussion with Health Canada, our regulatory, regulatory authority, so that we make sure that we have the right criteria to determine if uh, the vaccine candidate is working on or not. And the criteria we had was that we, we would have to meet more than 50% efficacy with what we call a lower bound of 30%, and we easily uh, met that, cri that criterion. So we are very happy with what we have and we are putting together the dossier to submit to Health Canada in the coming days. In the coming days. And so what does that process look like with, say, an approval from Health Canada and then potentially to a rollout um, for those in Canada or around the world? What does that process look like timeline-wise? So the, the, con the only control we have so far is our, our dossier submission to Health Canada, once it's uh, into Health Canada, Canada's hands, we don't have control anymore, but we surely hope that the review process will go uh, uh, swiftly and smoothly so we can get an approval hopefully early next year. Uh, we are already producing the vaccine candidates, so once it is approved, we will be ready to, to start distributing to the government of, of Canada and, uh, you know, they will be responsible to distribute uh, this vaccine if approved uh, to, to uh, provinces or to other countries. So it's uh, once there, we don't have uh, control on our vaccine. So our, our contract is to deliver doses to the Canadian government. Natalie, uh, during the trials, of course, we're going to have to put the asterisk on the Omicron variant because it was not circulating during trials. Um, would the Medicago vaccine, are you confident that it could work against this variant if it especially becomes dominant? Uh, this is something we are going to test in the, in the coming weeks. So uh, as you may know, we don't use live viruses in our, in our system, so we don't have uh, viruses in our labs. So we are talking to uh, labs, uh, you know, in different countries. So when they are ready to, to have, uh, to, to work with this Omicron variant, they will be testing our sera coming from the vaccinated people to see if we can, uh, if the, the, the antibodies can neutralize the virus. Uh, we're confident that we'll have some type of, of protection, but of course we have to test that. But uh, as, as I told earlier, you know, we have very good efficacy against a range of variants, not only Delta, but also Gamma, almost 90% against Gamma and uh, more than that for the others. So we are, we are confident that we'll be able to provide a, at least a, a good protection against Omicron if needed. Natalie, we've got less than a minute to go, but some of the visuals that we're seeing, obviously this is a plant-based vaccine, and there are a lot of questions on what does that mean and how much different is it from the formulas of other vaccines that are currently in the market and going into arms. So can you break that down? Can you explain it? Yes, for sure. Uh, so the plants are, in fact, are our mini factories. So this, this is the, you know, the plants are producing the vaccine, but what uh, is coming out of the plants once we purify uh, the, the vaccine uh, candidate is more of a traditional type of vaccine. It's very similar to the vaccine for HPV or hepatitis B. So it's a virus-like particle. So it's a traditional vaccine uh, produced into a unique or distinctive 
platform. So the difference with the other uh, type of vaccine is that we, when, when you receive uh, our vaccine or vaccine candidate, you already have the, the protein produced. The other uh, vaccine, you will receive the mRNA, for example, then your body will produce the protein and then the, the immune system will be reacting to the protein. With our vaccine candidate, once you receive uh, the vaccine candidate, it's already right, you know, ready to uh, to uh, stimulate the immune uh, response. Very interesting. So okay, Natalie, we, we, will, we, we will be watching, as you mentioned, in the coming days to submit your vaccine candidate to Health Canada, and then it is in their hands, and then potentially into our arms soon, as you would be playing a role in the booster shot campaign, that's for sure. Um, Natalie, appreciate you taking the time with us. I know you've got a very busy day. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time.